Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing what seems to be one of the most unusual and possibly one of the most exciting discoveries from around a white dwarf. A white dwarf somewhere out there. Okay, it's actually a white dwarf approximately 117 light years away from us, and a white dwarf known as WD 1054-226. The object you see in this image right here. And just like several other white dwarfs discovered in the last few years, usually referred to as the polluted white dwarfs, what's happening around the system suggests several things. First of all, it seems to possess some sort of a ring system, which most likely formed when some of the original planets that used to exist in the star system, very likely farther away from the star, slowly started to come closer, and due to the gravitational interactions with the white dwarf, started to fall apart, forming the disk around it. Usually we call them polluted white dwarfs because they eventually have a lot of different heavy deposits on the surface from the planetary material that used to exist around the system. And second of all, when studying this particular white dwarf, the scientists realized that there were unusual dips coming from the white dwarf itself as if something passed in front of a star. But everything else about the white dwarf was more or less typical. So for example, its size is pretty much the same as you see right here, it's around the size of planet Earth. Despite having mass that's essentially almost the same as our own sun, and it also most likely was a star, possibly even similar to our sun, approximately a billion years ago. But then, just like our sun is going to be doing in the future, it went through its red giant stage, released all of the gas from its outer shell, producing what's known as a planetary nebula, and eventually left behind nothing but a white dwarf on the inside. But obviously, certain planets survived, and they're now being absorbed by the white dwarf itself. But here's the kicker though, when the scientists used several observations from both space telescopes and the ground telescopes, specifically using one of the newer instruments known as the UltraCam on top of the European Southern Observatory, combining it with the data from the NASA's TESS telescope, they discovered something they didn't really expect to discover. They discovered these unusual periodic dips. We're obviously talking about dips in brightness, and the way that they looked here it was kind of strange. Every 23 minutes, for some reason, the white dwarf very briefly dipped in brightness. Then, 23 minutes later, it did the same. Then, same. And it happened over and over and over again. And these transit dips, normally, in a regular star system, would indicate possibly a planetary passage. But in this case, it was happening every 23 minutes, like a clockwork. It wasn't always the same though, as a matter of fact it seemed to have quite a lot of variation, as you can sort of see from this image right here, so in that sense it's definitely not the same object, and it's definitely not similar objects, the objects seem to be sort of different. But what exactly was happening here, and what was causing these dips? Well that's where, I guess, the mystery starts. Just to give you a short version, at the moment it's still not entirely clear. But, as you can probably tell from the title, it might involve some kind of a planetary object that seems to be in the habitable zone of this particular star system. And that's why this is currently one of the most exciting discoveries coming from a white dwarf system. So let's dissect some of these discoveries. So first of all, when it comes to the individual dips, the scientists here believe that based on the observations of the actual light coming from there and the spectroscopic analysis, is that all of these dips are caused by something that seems to possess metallicity. Although I have to clarify, we're not talking about a metallic object, we're talking about astronomical metallicity, meaning that it's not made out of hydrogen and helium. And although I'm sure most of us would love to believe that these are some kind of alien structures possibly made out of metal, despite the unusual periodicity, that's not the case. It does not seem to be caused by anything that would indicate artificial intelligence. The actual variation in periodicity is just way too random for this to be an object that's artificial. And on top of this, the spectral light here indicates that these seem to be irregular, dusty, possibly even comet-like objects. But they're really large. They're maybe even moon-sized. But because of the variation in their periods, they seem to be most likely not spherical and possibly have somewhat irregular shapes based on, of course, observations so far. But discovering asteroids or comets or even large comets, moon-sized comets, passing in front of an object is not unusual. What is unusual is the periodicity. 23 minutes plus minus a few seconds. Okay, so first of all, it's really important here to understand that it's not super accurate. Some of the dips were kind of delayed, and some dips happened twice. So there's definitely some variation here and there. But on average, it seems to be 23 minutes. 
And to explain this, the scientists started to think outside of the box. They actually focused on planets we have here in the solar system. For example, planets like Jupiter that do, because of their mass, produce certain patterns in other objects orbiting Jupiter or even orbiting the solar system. In this case, we're talking about harmonics. You might be already familiar with how harmonics work, especially if you're a musician, but in a nutshell, depending on the standing wave and how it's represented, you can have different types of harmonics. The fundamental tone will be always like this, but as you start dividing the wave into several parts, you'll eventually start producing different types of harmonics that can be very stable for a very long time. In this particular case, I only have the simulation for the fourth harmonic. But the scientists in this paper doing the calculations realized that a 23 minute period also seems to align perfectly with the 65th harmonic. In other words, imagine something like this, but 65 times. And having harmonics in different objects in the solar system is pretty common when there's a massive object, massive planet for example, causing a lot of other smaller objects to assume certain orbits where things become a little bit more stable. And so in this particular case, we might actually have something like this, as one of the potential explanations. In other words, there could be tiny rings around the system with possibly even moon-sized objects in those rings, leftovers from different planets, or possibly even new planets being formed right now, but the actual pattern that they form, the harmonic that they form, seems to be caused by a much more massive object somewhere in the orbit that we don't seem to see in any of the observations from the white dwarf so far. But more importantly, calculating all of this results in the overall period of orbit for this planet. It seems to orbit around the white dwarf every 25 hours. And that might sound like very, very quick, suggesting that obviously the planet would be quite extreme. But remember, here we're talking about the white dwarf, an object that's already really small, despite obviously being really hot. In this particular case, it's probably about 60% the mass of the sun, with the overall temperature of being about 8,000 Kelvin. And assuming that these calculations are correct, this would make this particular planet extremely interesting, because the amount of illumination or light it receives from the white dwarf would theoretically place this planet right in the middle of the habitable zone of the system. So yeah, in a sense, white dwarfs can also have their own habitable zones. In other words, in this particular region, in theory, we could expect maybe liquid water. Specifically because the equilibrium temperature on this planet would be approximately 50 degrees Celsius, slightly hotter than planet Earth, but still in the range where liquid water could exist. But at this point, that's sort of where these similarities end. So first of all, as I've discussed in one of the previous videos that you can find in the description or maybe somewhere right there, a lot of the white dwarfs, especially the polluted white dwarfs, are extreme environments. They produce a ridiculous amount of radiation. And even though this is not the first planet that was discovered around a white dwarf, it's always been assumed that these environments would be completely impossible to survive in for any type of life, for obviously anything. Not to mention the fact that it's very unlikely that liquid water or even atmosphere would ever survive these environments either. On top of this, we have no idea what kind of effects the tidal forces from this white dwarf have on the planet either. It might actually not even be in a single piece. It might be just a sort of a chunk of material that sort of stays together, but might not be a planet at all. More of a cloudy representation of what used to be a planet, but in reality something entirely different. And on top of this, there is actually a high chance that at some point it's also going to fall apart and probably get swallowed by the white dwarf, eventually making it even more polluted than it currently is. Or in other words, maybe that's actually the fate of all of the planets around white dwarfs they all might end up inside of the white dwarf, eventually leaving the system completely empty. But that's beside the point. The discovery in this case is still extremely interesting and very mysterious. For example, if not for the planet, what's making these objects have such a regular appearance, preventing these objects from colliding or from basically disappearing completely? Further on, if this is a planet and if these are moon-sized objects, were they actually created recently and from the material that used to be here once the star turned into a white dwarf? Or is this a scenario where a much larger planet from the outskirts came close to the white dwarf, fell apart, and created a relatively large disk with all sorts of rings on the inside, with the largest piece of the planet potentially causing the other rings to assume certain patterns? Or could these be alien space stations orbiting around the white dwarf collecting dust? Nope, 
probably not that at all. At the moment, there is absolutely no evidence that any of this is artificial or shows any patterns suggesting alien life. So at the moment, there is unfortunately no good explanation other than a planet with a very specific 66 to 65 resonance that might create these particular patterns. But in this case, the scientists caution this as well. This is of course assuming that the orbits here are completely circular and very perfect. What if they're not? What if all of this is actually very eccentric? In other words, the orbits could have a very different shape and we could be seeing patterns that we're not really describing correctly. And so to try to solve this, the scientists will hopefully be able to model this and use computer simulations to see if the computer models match the ones we observe from real life. That's one way of explaining what's going on here. But until that's done, I guess we can only wait and see if anyone else comes up with a better explanation. Although the problem with this particular system has always been the pollution itself. There seems to be way too much dust and way too many particles in the system to make the observations from the system extremely difficult. So it's probably going to be a few years before we actually have an answer to what's happening in the system itself. And since our sun is also going to become a white dwarf sometime in the future, more like 7 billion years, for all we know, maybe this right here is actually the future of the solar system, well, at least to some extent. And because the vast majority of the stars in our galaxy are going to become white dwarfs, maybe most of them will end up having something like this at some point in the future. But until then, that's all I wanted to mention. All of the links are in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.